I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today's topic will be complex numbers. This is a continuation of uh, our saga about numbers. We started from natural numbers, uh, added negative ones, then added fractions to get the rational, then real numbers came, um, came to story. And uh, right now we are still expanding our universe of numbers. But this is, by the way, the last expansion. Uh, this is the frontier behind which we do not really go at all. Um, so how would that saga about numbers unraveled? If you remember first, we were dealing with natural numbers only, like one, two, three. Um, and then they added negative numbers. Well, actually, first they added zero and then negative numbers uh, to make it a group, something which is a beautiful, harmonious, and closed in itself set of objects which we can operate upon. So the operation of addition among integer numbers is completely closed. Any two numbers can be added together, and you can get uh, another integer number. And for every number, there is a reverse number, which will give 0 if added together. What it actually means that um, any equation which is related to uh, addition, something like a plus x equals b, where a, x, and b are any integer numbers, it always has a solution. What we have to do is we have to reverse a, that's number one, add it to both parts of the equation, because we know, we know that equation will, will, will still help if we add the same number. So it will be minus a plus a plus x equals to minus a plus b. This is obviously 0, because that's the definition of minus a. And 0 plus x is x, and that's the definition of 0, actually, right? So 0 plus x equals minus a plus b. And uh, so this is the definition of 0, it's x. Using um, commutative law of addition, we can say that this is b plus minus a. And then we basically define the operation of subtraction. To subtract b from a actually means adding uh, a reverse to a. So this is by definition of subtraction b minus a. So this is always true for any integer number. So this equation always has a solution. This is very important, because if we don't add negative numbers to our set of natural numbers, we will not be able to solve something like 5 plus x equals 3. Right? OK, so ability to solve equation within certain set of numbers is very important. Actually. That's why we have added uh, rational numbers, for instance. Well, rational numbers were added because the multiplication wasn't always solvable. If we will multiply x by a to get b, for certain integer a and b, uh, it's solvable. Something like x times 3 equals 6 has a root 2. But for others, it's not solvable in the set of integer numbers. So we had to introduce rational numbers, and x would be 5 over 3, a new number, rational numbers, to make this equation possible. So I would like to continue this theme of um, solving equa ability to solve equation as the necessity to add new numbers. So the next step was, if you remember, square root of 2. We did not have a rational number which was uh, a square root of 2, which means we cannot have a rational number p over q, which being squared gives us 2. 
there is no such thing as a rational number p over q, where p and q are integers. So that's why we have introduced a brand new rational number square root of 2, and many others. Now, there are still certain equations within the area, within the set of real numbers, which cannot be solved. And the primary one of them is that there is no such thing as a square root of a negative number. Why? Well, obviously, because if there is a rational number a, then being squared, it should be equal to minus 1. But we know that any rational number, positive or negative, if squared, will always give positive number. So this is not solvable in, uh, uh, among the real numbers. Same thing as always. What mathematicians do in this case? They invent new numbers. OK, fine. So this is our definition of a new number. Traditionally, it's denote, denoted as a, a lowercase i. Uh, it stands for uh, imaginary. Uh, as in opposition to real numbers, now we have imaginary numbers. So i is an imaginary number, and the definition is exactly what we could not do before. This is a number being squared gives minus 1. Or, if you wish, which is the same thing, is square root of minus 1. That's the same thing. Now, we have introduced a new number, and now we can solve the equation x squared equals minus 1. We know that the solution is x equals 5, because we have defined it this way. There is nothing to it. We didn't solve this, basically. We just defined. This is a number which gives the solution of this equation. All right, fine. How about the rest of the things? And what can we do with this number? Well, if you remember, any set, any good set of numbers is supposed to satisfy certain um, rules, axioms, whatever. Now, for instance, addition has two very, very important rules. First is commutative, and another is associative. Or, which is the same thing, so the order uh, of addition, first to the second and then the result to the third, or first we will do second and third, and then add the first to the, to, to, to the result of this operation is insignificant. And the commutative means we can add in any order. So this is true, and uh, similar, law similar law exists for multiplication. Again, the same thing, commutative for multiplication and associative, exactly the same thing. So when we introduce a new number, we would like our universe of numbers to be expanded in such a way that these laws are preserved, because these laws are basically um, the foundation of uh, any kind of equation solving, any kind of calculations which we do, etc., etc. So no matter how um, um, fantastic numbers we can really come up with, we still have to be within, the, within certain boundaries, within certain um, framework of these laws. So by introducing a new number i, I really have to be able to expand the universe um, a little bit further than just this. Because for instance, if I introduce the new number, I have to be able to know what is something like this, or what is this, or what is 2 multiplied by i. So all these numbers have to, be, have to be defined as well, because i is something which is completely artificial. Uh, we defined, the only thing which we defined is i squared, basically. So everything else, all other operations, we really have to define somehow. Well, how can we define it? Well, the, the, the simplest way which uh, people have decided to do is the following. We will define 
once and for all this number. So multiply uh, i by any number and the result add any number, where a and b are real numbers. So these are real. So for any two a and b, for any two pairs of real number numbers, we will define this operation. Well, how can we define it? Well, easily. If this is um, a number, then it should satisfy certain laws. So basically what I'm saying is, this is a new number, and these are the laws which I have to really define about this number. I have to be able to add two such numbers to get the number of the same of the same set. I don't know how to multiply, how to add, or how to add these two together. I don't know that at all. All I'm saying is I'm just defining this new number. How? By basically defining how it operates on a similar number. And this is how. Oops, I think I made a small mistake. It's a D. So, if I have two numbers of that uh, complex form, by the way, this is the general form of complex number, uh, I have to define an operation of uh, addition using just exactly this. So, to add two complex numbers where we have an imaginary part and the real part, I have to use the coefficient one and coefficient another um, oh, again, I made another mistake, I'm sorry. This is C. I add together imaginary parts and add together real parts. Okay, so imaginary to imaginary, A to C, and B to D. Okay, so I know how to add two real numbers. So basically for a general representation of any complex number, which is this, Using this axiom, I know how to add them together. Now, why these actually are, are good definitions? Because since uh, uh, addition is uh, commutative and associative among real numbers, let's see if it will be held for a complex number. Well, very easily. Let's say commutative. A times I plus B. One complex number, uh, c times i plus d is equal to, as I said, a plus c i plus, plus b plus d. Now, let's do it in reverse. c i plus d and a i plus b. I just reverse the sequence. Well, according to definition, of addition among the complex numbers, it should be C plus A, right, times I, and D plus B. Imaginary to imaginary, real to real. Now, but we know that A plus C and C plus A are equal to each other because among real numbers, A and C are real numbers. All, all these coefficients are real numbers. It's only I which is imaginary. So among real numbers, commutative law uh, is, is held. Same thing here. So basically, these are equal. Since these are equal, we have exactly the same numbers as a result of this addition. Now, let's go to multiplication. We will do exactly the same thing. We will define an operation on two different um, complex numbers. Multiplication. All right. Now, 
I don't want to write this answer right now. I would like to think about how it should look like. Um, obviously, um, the operation of multiplication should also satisfy commutative and, uh, uh, and associative laws. So I really have to define it in a, in a reasonable manner. Let's assume that i is not an imaginary number which we don't know how to multiply or add or anything like that. What if a is just some number, real number? Well, in which case we can open the parentheses and multiply member by member and what we will get. Let's just write down what we will get. First component to first component will be a times i times c times i. Well, second component, first to second, a times i times d plus b times c times i and b times d. So, I'm using the rules which I really am not supposed to, but I'm using them to derive with some definition which will be reasonable, and these rules therefore will be held for that definition. Now, let's think about what we got. Uh, again, multiplication should be uh, commutative. So, so, so whatever uh, transformations I will do, I really should think about the preservation of commutative, commutative and associative laws. So this can be multiplied in different order, and I will have a times c times i squared. Now, this can be, uh, again, change the order, a d times i, and i can be uh, factored out, and I will have a g plus b c times i. And then b d remains the same. What is it equal? Now you remember that i squared was defined as minus 1. That's the definition of i. i is the square root of minus 1, so i squared is minus 1. So this thing becomes minus ac plus the same thing. And the whole thing becomes equal to bg minus a c plus a g plus b c i. Okay, now what I do, I wipe out this and say that by definition this is equal to this. So it's a d plus b c i b d minus a c. So this is a definition of multiplication. If I define it this way, then as we will make sure and it definitely will be true, all the different laws about multiplication will be preserved. Um, just as an illustration, let's do, uh, for instance, let's check that it's a commutative. Well, very easy. Let's do ci plus d multiply by ai plus b. Using this, we have to basically substitute c for i and d for b and reverse. So it will be C, B, plus D, A, right? Substituted A for C and D for B. B for D and C for A. Same thing here. B will be changed to D, D will be changed to B, C, A. Now, but these two expressions are exactly the same, right? It's just different order, but among r r real numbers, 
this is exactly equal because BC is equal to uh, CB because multiplication is commutative and then addition is also uh, commutative. So these are the same and these are the same because of the same reason. So we, got, we have come up with exactly the same number using just this definition. I have not done any calculations. I'm just using this as a definition of the multiplication among two um, uh, complex number numbers. So there is a very interesting um, uh, circumstance here which I would like you to pay attention to. This is a multiplication, operation of multiplication. These, this dot, and this plus, and this dot, and this plus, are really not, because we don't know how to multiply i by a, or how to add i, uh, i a to b. This is not defined yet. All I'm saying is that this is a generalized um, notation for a complex number. So probably, what, what, what probably would be even um, mathematically uh, more strict, I would say, is to say this is a, just a conditional uh, expression for some operation which will look like addition among real numbers. And this also will be some kind of a uh, a sign, uh, if you wish, which actually will mean exactly the same thing as multiplication. And let me explain why. So, being equipped with these definitions of multiplication and, uh, and addition, we can actually say that this, I will use dot in a circle and plus in a circle is a generalized notation for a complex number. But let me just tell you why these multiplication and addition signs in circles are really like the real ones, like the real multiplication and the real addition. Let's start with addition. For obvious reason, any rational number, b, I can represent as 0 times a plus b in this complex notation. Why? Because this is 0, and 0 basically nullifies the imaginary part. So I have only this number uh, which is retained. So I can say that if operations upon b are um, uh, basically in sync with operations on this complex number, then basically B is represented as uh, the complex number with imaginary part equal to zero. Well, and actually, it, it actually is, because if we will take another number, let's say D, and I will also represent it as this. Now, for obvious reason, I would expect that B plus G would be represented as this. But this is a real uh, addition. But let's check whether it's true or false. Remember how our complex numbers were defined as far as operation of addition. You remember that if I have this, then the operation of addition is actually this. Using this definition, we can say that A and C are zero in this case. So A plus C will be zero as well. So as we see, this general representation of a real number as zero dot in a circle which is kind of a pseudo-multiplication. Zero is pseudo-multiplied by i plus uh, pseudo-plus b. Now, this representation is, is, is really held for any real number, and the laws of addition, let's say, exactly result in the same thing. A sum of two real numbers will be, according to this rule, will be, again, a complex number with zero pseudo-multiplied by i. Uh, and uh, and the real part will be still b plus, b plus d. So 
using this notation, my real numbers are preserved with all their laws, commutative, uh, associative, so we can basically do any kind of a calculation which we used to do with real numbers by themselves, we can do these calculations using their complex representation. Now, how purely complex number, let's say i, should be represented in the generalized notation? Well, obviously, i I would like to represent as this. as one pseudo multiplied by i plus zero. So a will be equal to one, and b is equal to zero. Now, let's see what happens. This is an imaginary number now. And now the question is, how is my multiplication, for instance? Well, let's just multiply i by i. What happens? If we will use our law of multiplication, and I will write here again, a i plus b real multiplication not by c i plus d is equal to uh, b d minus a c pseudo multiplied by i. No, sorry. This is a real part. B, D minus A, C. This is the real part. And uh, the imaginary part would be A times D plus B times C pseudo multiplied by i. Now, using this rule, and using this representation for i, let's see what happens if I multiply i by i. So a equals 1, b equals 0, c equals 1, g equals 0. Well, if I will substitute this into this, let's see. b times d is 0. a times c is 1 with a minus sign. So i times i is i times i is minus 1. That's ac. Now, ad, ag is 0. b times c is also 0. So we have 0 0 pseudo multiplied by i. But this is a generalized uh, notation for any real number. So in, this is basically minus 1. i times i, which is i squared, is minus 1. We came to a definition of i squared. So everything seems to be dancing together. Using these definitions for addition and multiplication, it's actually working among the complex numbers and all the laws like commutative and associative are preserved, and we still are within the framework of the complex numbers. If you multiply one complex number by another complex number, we get another complex number. So the universe of complex numbers, again, is closed. It has all the operations and everything seems to be okay. And now what's important is we have expanded our universe of numbers towards ability to solve certain equations which we were not able to solve before. What kind of equations? This is equation. This is not solvable among the real numbers, but among complex numbers, I can say that solution is x equals y, where y is just imaginary number. Now, um, one more little thing about all these pseudo-multiplication and pseudo-addition as I was using them before. I said that the generalized form of complex number is 
is this. I have basically invented new uh, number, new signs for uh, multiplication and addition because I could not really multiply a real number by imaginary or add to imaginary numbers. However, I can definitely say that let's, let's talk about multiplication first. Let's talk about addition first. Uh, I can definitely say that this is a real plus. Um, why? Because if I will add this number, complex number, and this number also represented as a complex, you will see that I will get this thing, which is the same as, as, as the real plus. Look at this. A times I, image pseudo multiplied by I, sorry, plus zero. That is basically the same thing as this. B can be represented as zero pseudo multiplied by I pseudo plus B. This is this. If I will add them together, sorry, if I will add them together according to the rules of addition among complex numbers, what will I get? Well, obviously, this is the real uh, addition. Obviously, I will get this. Imaginary parts are added together, so it will be a plus zero. Pseudo multiplied by i, and uh, real parts are added together, which is now this is the real plus and this is the real plus. So I can use my real numbers arithmetic. So this is a times i plus b. Well we come basically to exactly the same thing, right? So, by really adding these two numbers together, really adding them together, I shouldn't really use circle here. So, plus is a real addition, addition which we have defined for complex numbers. We basically come up with the same result, which means that if we use this notation or we use this notation, it's exactly the same thing, because this represented um, separately in a complex way as this, and added according to the complex arithmetic will give us exactly the same thing. So this plus, pseudo plus, and the real plus are exactly the same. Now let's talk about multiplication. As you expect, we will get exactly the same thing. So the result of multiplication, what I'm saying is that multiplication um, among the uh, complex numbers is exactly equivalent to, multi to pseudo multiplication, which we used for this type of thing. Let's. Uh, think about what this actually is. This is a number, complex number, um, which can be actually expressed as zero, plus zero, a pseudo plus zero, right? So I would like to prove that this is a real multiplication. How can I prove it? Very easily. If I start it with this number, with this number, let me do it differently. Let me start with number A and number I and multiply, really multiply them together according to the rules of complex arithmetic. So I is actually in the complex form would be 0 uh, pseudo multiplied by I plus A and I is 1 pseudo multiplied by Y plus 0, right? Now, if I will multiply them together, well, if you remember, uh, I should probably put that formula again. Um, uh, let's use 
uh, x i plus y pseudo plus. Multiply u i plus v. So, um, according to the definition, um, it will be uh, imaginary part would be y times u plus x times v. Pseudo multiplied by i. And the real part would be uh, y v minus x u. Okay? Now, using this formula, so this is x, this is y, this is u, and this is v. y times u, y times u, it's a times 1, so it's a. x plus v, uh, x times v, x times v, that's 0. Pseudo multiplied by i. Sorry, this is the definition, so I should use the pseudo signs here. Pseudo plus y times v, y times v is 0. x times u is 0. So basically, 0. Which is, as you see, is what we have started with. So really multiplying a times i in their um, full complex representation, we got exactly the same number which we used before. So the real multiplication, so a times uh, a, a pseudo multiplied by i is basically the same thing as if you really multiply a by i in the, using the complex arithmetic. So both plus and minus in their circular representation actually mean exactly the same thing as without the circle. And I can use basically the same uh, sign as before and say that my generalized complex form is this, where a and b are real, and i is this, i squared is equal to minus 1. Well, that's the introduction to complex numbers. And um, what was the reason to invent these numbers? Well, the reason was, the most important reason was that we cannot solve this equation among the real numbers. And we wanted to. Not only this. Actually, any equation which is related to polynom uh, has certain solutions, roots, and there are many polynomes, like x squared is basically one of them, um, which you know do not have a, a solution. So if you have an any polynom, something like 2x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x plus 7 equals to 0. If you have any kind of a polynomial um, equation, it's not always that we can find the roots of this if we are dealing with real numbers only. Introduction of complex numbers allows to actually find roots for any kind of a polynom. And what's interesting is that the number of roots is very much closely related to the degree of this polynomial. Uh, but that's a completely different story. Anyway, um, we have expanded our universe of the real numbers towards complex numbers. We know how to uh, write them down. We know how to multiply them, how to add them. Um, basically, that's the beginning. And uh, you, you probably would find very interesting to solve certain problems which would be accompanying this lecture. Um, and uh, just um, one of the properties, maybe just to finish it up on a good note, let's just think about what will be if you will multiply a three times. 
uh, uh, I, 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 I multiplied uh, three times to get i cubed. Well, again, we all know that we have defined our new numbers in such a way that um, all the laws are supposed to be preserved, right? So this is i times i times i, and since we are preserving the associative law, it means i times i in parentheses times i, which is i squared, which is minus 1, so it's minus 1 times i. Or shorten just minus i. But that's just one of the examples of complex arithmetic. Um, by the way, i to the fourth degree obviously would be i squared times i squared, which is 1. Minus 1 times minus 1, etc. So we can multiply and add any complex numbers without any problems. We can um, uh, use the square root of uh, minus 1. Um, well, anything possible right now. So in this universe um, of complex numbers, um, which we have expanded our universe of real numbers to, um, all kinds of uh, equations, as I was saying, are possible to solve. And uh, um, uh, that's probably a good point where I would like to stop here. And um, there will be certain interesting problems, as I said, and I believe that these problems will, uh, will dig further into the depths of the complex numbers. Complex numbers are very interesting. In some way, they are much more, um, I would say, harmonious even than uh, the real numbers. There are many operations which are not possible among the real numbers which mathematicians like to have. And, uh, um, and complex numbers really expand the universe towards it. Um, the last note which I would like to make about complex numbers is their geometrical representation. If, um, if you remember, we can always have a straight line, put zero somewhere, have some kind of a scale, say this is the length one, and using that scale we can basically place integer numbers, and in between all rational and irrational numbers, etc. So all the real numbers are represented on the straight line. How complex numbers can be geometrically represented? Well, the way how people usually do it is the following. Let's have two perpendicular lines. One will be for real part of a uh, real part, which is B, um, of the complex number. And another will be for imaginary part. So this is B, and this is A, and this point on the plane now. So we, we have come up from the line where only real numbers are represented to the plane where complex numbers are represented. And now every point on the plane is represented by certain coordinates down to real axis, you will have the real part, which is B, and to the left, uh, or to the right, um, projection on the vertical axis will give you the imaginary part. So you can say that this point, or this vector, if you wish, uh, represent, represents the, uh, the complex number. And um, what's interesting is, and this is related to uh, vector, algebra, vector algebra, um, you can actually prove that addition of complex numbers and additions of vectors are exactly the same. And uh, this geometrical representation is really much deeper than just placing a dot on the plane. But this is, again, a completely different story. We will go into vector algebra in some other lecture. Thank you very much. That's it for today.